Hi, today I've been working on developing um, a visualizer for use with Sonic Pi, which is written in the processing language. I came across one on the internet which just produced white uh, circles, concentric circles, uh, in a relatively small window. And uh, what I've done is to take this and to extend it. So, first of all, it's going to use the full screen. And secondly, I've um, added color to it. And thirdly, I've added different shapes so that we can also generate uh, rectangles and stars. And then finally, and perhaps most importantly, um, I've added down here at the bottom um, uh, an OSC server. And this can accept incoming OSC messages to control all these functions. It can, can select uh, whether we're using um, ellipses or whether we're using uh, rectangles or whether we're using stars or a combination of these. It can select the color which is being used. It can uh, select also whether the shapes are concentric uh, around the center of the screen or whether they are offset at random. And so you get quite a lot of control over this. Um, and if we start it running, um, you won't see anything because it'll start off with a black screen. Um, but we're going to bring a Sonic Pi to the fore now. And this has got the program loaded, which I'm using, which is mainly just uh, live loops, which are sending OSC messages. Um, first of all, we set up a link um, on the local machine to port 5000. And then this live loop, which is called Shapes, is actually going to se uh, select uh, a message uh, choosing from possibilities of S, E, R, or S, E, S, R, E, R, or S, E, R. S stands um, for, uh, what does it stand for? Um, star, E stands for ellipse, R stands for rectangle, and so this is going to select what is going to be uh, drawn, and it's going to go through and change every two seconds. And it's going to send the uh, OSC message, viz, shapes followed by that parameter. The second one is going to send the color information and so I'm choosing a red, green and blue values um, in three rings here and we're simply going to tick through these and choose a selection of colors. Obviously you could make this more extensive but it gives the idea and that's again going to update every two seconds. The third one um, although it is updating, is in fact, I could leave the values the same. Um, this one here is going to set the audio sensitivity and these are going to adjust stroke widths. Um, and uh, I don't say any more about that, but you can fiddle around with them a bit if you want. And then this one here is going to adjust the offset of the shapes. So we have a horizontal offset, offset a vertical offset, and some various values. These are going to tick around them and uh, that's going to change every eight seconds. And then uh, in order for this to work we need to have some audio which is fed in. This goes through a fast Fourier transform uh, which then produces a range of values over the frequency spectrum which are used to control um, the magnitude of the uh, various shapes and when they're actually going to be drawn. And um, so we've got two, uh, one of which is going to play loop arm men stretched over four seconds, and the other which is going to play um, a pentatonic scale of TBA 303. And so if we reduce the visibility so that you make it transparent, we can start this running and you'll see the end result. Here we go. <laughs> Although the screen's transparent, I'll actually move Sonic Pi out of the way because uh, it's actually a bit more spectacular if you see it uh, just straight on. You see that we've got concentric shapes sometimes, sometimes we've got single shapes. I've constrained it so that when we've got concentric shapes, uh, two together, it's going to force um, the horizontal vertical offset to zero so that they are um, on top of each other like that. When we've got single shapes, they can either be concentric or they can be um, 
centered. You'll see the variation there. You can see the colors changing every um, two seconds or so, I think it is, or four seconds it might be. And you can see the other aspects changing and how the shapes uh, size is synchronized to the music that we're playing there. Bring Sonic Pie up again. And we'll stop this running. Look on the um, visuals die away. Um, I'm going now to just comment out the notes which are playing in that loop and that loop and we'll start that playing again. Um, it's controlling the um, visual display but of course there's no sound so you can't see anything. So I'm going to move to a different um, piece here and I'm going to bring up um, a MIDI player. Um, this when I run it is going to turn uh, Sonic Pi into a MIDI player and it's going to take the sound from this and it's going then to drive the visualizer with it. Um, so here goes. I know I need to bring that to the front so you can see it again. Um, yeah. I'm actually using my touchscreen um, controller so I can alter things such as the synth and various other values which are playing. So we get quite a nice system, Sonic Pi, as a, um, an instrument playing here MIDI which is fully controllable as to what it's going to sound like. At the same time, we have got the uh, visualizer running, and I can switch off all the MIDI channels like this. And so the visualizer disappears, switch them on again. So I dub this sort of thing live performance rather than live coding. I've done most of the coding beforehand. But I am manipulating what Sonic Pi does, and Sonic Pi itself is manipulating the visual uh, effects that you can see there. Let this stop when it gets to the end of this play. You can actually speed it up too if you want. Faster. So there we have it, um, Sonic Pi with a pure uh, processing um, visualizer, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I will publish the details of this uh, when I've tidied them up a bit. Um, I'm going to be a bit busy in the next uh, few days, so it might be a bit of time, but it will eventually be published and you can give it a go yourself. Thanks for watching.